So hello everyone, it's a real honor for me to be presenting here at the WITS Global Conference. My name is Paula Petrone, and throughout this talk, I'd love to share with you my experience with deep learning, uh, which has been quite transformative, I must say, how I transitioned from being an AI agnostic to becoming an optimistic believer in the power of AI to enable us to see beyond the obvious, which is especially relevant for healthcare. So let me introduce myself as a physicist by training and a biomedical data scientist by trade. In my lab, we develop data science applications that aim to improve the health of people. We work with different data modalities and develop algorithms for the early diagnosis of various conditions. For example, we would like to understand why we age and how to reverse aging, which is the holy grail of rejuvenating medicine. We would like to identify who is at risk of contracting infections like COVID, malaria or Chagas, or identifying people with cancer, tuberculosis or liver disease. In the last year, our lab initiated a very exciting collaboration with startup company Newborn Solutions. The challenge in this case is the early detection of meningitis in babies. Meningitis is an excruciating condition prevalent in developing countries. Meningitis is caused by inflammation in the brain due to bacterial or viral infection. The mortality rate in newborns with meningitis is quite high. It ranges from 5 to 20 percent, and it heavily depends on early detection. So diagnosing early saves a lot of lives. It is important to understand that the st standard diagnostic procedure is a lumbar puncture used for counting white blood cells in the cerebrospinal fluid, which as you can see here in the picture, is a quite invasive procedure. As a parent, I wouldn't let a doctor perform a lumbar puncture in my baby unless it's critical. So this is not an ideal procedure for meningitis screening. So Newborn Solutions has now developed an alternative method. They have created a non-invasive and portable ultrasound device so the great thing about this device is that it is small and easy to handle, and it can be taken to remote, low-income regions with a high prevalence of meningitis, like, for example, Sub-Sahara Africa. So see this red area right here? That's the baby's fontanelle, a soft spot on the baby's little head. So when we perform an ultrasound, we scan this fontanelle using a completely safe and non-invasive ultrasound method. This technology gives us high-resolution images of the cerebrospinal fluid, just like the ones I'm showing here. So now, the analysis of these images is the real challenge. In one column, we have images of healthy babies with no inflammation and no white blood cells. And in the other column, we have images of babies with meningitis with a very high white blood cell count. But here is the thing, even for a trained human eye, telling the difference between these two is nearly impossible. And this is because our eyes and our brains are not prepared, are not able to perceive, let alone count, these white blood cells. However, for a trained convolutional network, this task, this task is totally possible. Now, using a deep learning architecture like the one we have here, which is a ResNet 50 pre-trained on ImageNet, we can achieve almost perfect accuracy in identifying babies with meningitis based on their fontanelle ultrasound images. So our results are very accurate. We were able to correctly classify 16 out of 17 babies. And this is so promising that we are now further validating these methods on larger cohorts. So now we can see how the network classifies meningitis on the left, and controls on the right. Interestingly, there is an increasing white blood cell concentration in the different images as you go down, which even the expert eye would miss. Now the big question is, how does the network do it? How does it manage to distinguish between these two cases? What are the particular factors, patterns, or textures in the image that enables the CNN to make this prediction, which is quite tricky for us humans to pick up? So this is the right moment to talk about the explainability and transparency of the algorithms. So not long ago, AI algorithms, especially deep learning, were like black boxes. 
So you feed them data and they give us predictions, but we didn't really know how they reached those conclusions. But times have changed. And today, regulatory policies, patients, doctors, and also our common sense are all calling for transparency in AI. People want to understand how AI works and to trust it better. So this is when a series of algorithms called Explainable AI, or XI, come into play. These algorithms applied to the neural networks show us which patterns are responsible for the prediction. For instance, there is this cool algorithm called GradCam that explains which pixels in an image are mostly used by the neural network when it's trying to tell apart dogs from cats. So going back to the ultrasound case, using XI and GradCam allows us to identify certain patterns or pixels that indicate areas related to white blood cells. For the meningitis case, we definitely see these big red blobs that are associated with the white blood cells. So more blobs, higher cell counts, more inflammation, indicating the condition is more severe. However, if we try to explain the images of the healthy babies, you see much less of these blobs, or you see none at all, indicating that these babies have no infection. In the past, I used to believe that before I started any medical image analysis project for it to be successful, I had to rely on the ground truth given by the expert eye of the doctor. So for me, the take home message with this project and other projects that follow this one is that deep learning can see patterns in images that remain unnoticed by the human eye. So to conclude, I really love that famous quote by Saint Exupery in The Little Prince. Many times what's really important is invisible. And that's really where explainable AI steps in, not to replace or displace the doctors, but to empower them to see beyond, complementing and enhancing their unique human capabilities, such as intuition, empathy, and experience. So we refer to this combination as augmented intelligence where AI and human intelligence work together to solve very difficult challenges. In particular, in healthcare, I believe this synergy will help doctors make better decisions, ultimately leading to better quality of life. So with that, I'd love to thank my team at IS Global, and particularly Hassan Sial for his work on these projects. I'd love to thank our partners at Newborn Solutions, and of course, I thank you all for listening.